Hi, and this is Exploring with Em and Stu. And today we are here in Suffolk and we're going to be taking you for a little look at the World War II coastal defences that were built here. Now we know there's plenty of bits still remaining, so we're going to see what we can find and hopefully tell you a little bit about them. After the evacuation of British troops from Dunkirk, the threat of invasion by the Germans became a strong reality. Defensive structures were built all over the British coast, paying particular attention to these vulnerable coastlines. And with German-occupied land just over the North Sea here, this part of Suffolk was definitely given its fair share. So that was a really nice bit of introduction there and a bit of inf nice information actually bit. from Emma. So, uh, but Emma's actually going to tell you exactly where we are. So we are actually between Sizewell and Thorpe Ness and it's this particular area we're going to be concentrating on. And because there was an awful lot of sea defences built here because of its very flat beaches, um, obviously. But uh, there's a few bits still remaining, so we're hoping that we can find them and with any luck we'll be able to tell you a little bit about Well, we them. are. Um, the only problem is, obviously, we would love... I mean, if you, I mean, if you look around me, Beautiful. it's absolutely stunning and it would be fantastic if we could put a drone up, but we can't because of that. <laughs> yes. It's the size well uh, power, station. power station yeah. and obviously we can't put a drone up here. There's signs sprooned throughout the whole lot of this coastline saying no droning. <laughs> Not to mention the fact that our drone won't take off anyway. Exactly. Um, so, so apologies. That we haven't got any of that, no. but hopefully there'll but be plenty of lovely shots. Exactly, and being such a beautiful day as well. Um, but we're going to carry on now because we're going to take you to a rather interesting feature. So today, visitors to the Suffolk coast, as I said, are greeted with miles of beautiful flat sandy beaches. But of course, it was these flat beaches that were seen as quite a threat for German invasion and an easy target for them to be able to land. And by the end of 1940, any visitors to this area were certainly met with a very different scene as the entire coastline here was turned into a military zone ready for battle if the Germans were to invade. With miles of barbed wire entangling the beaches and spiked metal girders protruding out of the sand, ready to rip the hull out of any enemy sea crafts that made it past the thousands of sea mines. And if the enemy was somehow able to get past all of that, they would be met with any tank ditches as well as large concrete blocks like the ones we've got here. So all that wonderful information that Emma's just given us and she's about to join us. So, so here we are at these quite impressive anti-tank blocks. Um, now, if you've ever been to the Suffolk coast, you've probably seen anti-tank blocks. There was literally thousands of them mm. stretching along. Um, but because they're so common, unfortunately, they're a little bit overlooked, aren't they? Yeah, they are. People don't think they're that, that interesting, but they were actually quite an integral part of the defence network that yes, was they built were, yeah. along here. And these particular ones were built at a right angle to the beach to sort of prevent any tanks that might have landed on the beach from being able to travel up and down to, say, Dunwich and down to Thorpe Ness. Well, the reason being is because if you look at these ones, these, these are on an angle. Now, if you look down this end of the beach, this is all up on a cliff. So we're actually, this bit's a, a cliff yeah, here. But, but, but relatively flat at the time. we spin round, which is just here, <laughs> this is flat. So obviously they would have tried to cage them in, wouldn't they? Like Absolutely. You know, sort of guide yeah. them where they wanted yes, them to they, be. They would basically want it to create a bottleneck, didn't basically, they? Basically, yeah. And they would, the bottleneck probably ended at some sort of gun. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if you go up towards Dunwich, there is rows and rows and rows of these That's things. It. And we're not going quite as far as that no. today, but maybe we'll take you for a little closer look at the construction because it's worth taking a little look at, isn't it? I feel it might be an idea because Emma's very good at this. So <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass the camera over to Emma and then she'll take you around it. So she knows a lot more than I do. <laughs> Uh, we, we, might, we know the same, but she presents it better. So there we go. So I'm going to throw her over to her now. So any tank blocks were constructed at virtually every vulnerable point along the coastline. They came in all different shapes and sizes, but as you can see, the ones that we've got here were the Q-type, and we'll take it for a little closer look. So here we are. Um, no doubt there was many more stretching further along into the sea at one point, but we'll have a little look at the construction. 
So what you actually see here is basically just the reinforced concrete top. But what you don't see is the fact that underneath there, they were sat on a, on a concrete plinth basically for stability. Um, these things weighed sort of several tons um, and were rather hastily made. And if you look at this, you can actually see part of the construction where they were basically made using wooden shuttering um, panels basically that were put across and they poured the concrete into the top. Um, the other fascinating thing <coughs> about this one is what appears to be bullet holes. Now we wonder whether or not these were possibly used for military training because a lot of that actually went on around here. Um, but a lot of the blocks do appear to have it, which is quite interesting. But many of them were actually blown up after the war, but uh, plenty around Suffolk. So if you're ever around the area and you want to have a little look, the chances are you'll be able to find some. Well, what can I say? Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> We get very passionate about this sort of stuff because these are forgotten relics. Yeah, yeah, like I said, um, we've all sort of grown up just being used to seeing these things about. Yeah. Maybe not really knowing what they are. A lot of people think that they're basically just barriers for car parks, um, which is what they've been reused as. A lot of them have been reused, haven't they, for sort of other purposes. They have. But um, yeah, it's always nice to sort of tell you actually what their history was. Yeah, and also, obviously, because these, these are overlooked, they played a very, very vital part of our yeah, like defences, yeah, so it's always good. But there's so, many more defences. There is many more defences, so uh, we're going to crack on and we'll see you in a bit. So all of these defences needed to be manned by troops and so dotted between them were infantry positions and mainly in the form of pillbox and we've actually got one up here on the cliff behind us. So the pillbox that we got up here was more commonly known as a Suffolk Square mainly due to the fact that it's only really found in Suffolk so it was likely that it was built by the same unit of Royal Engineers either by the engineers themselves or often contractors working for the military. So what we see remaining today is mainly just the concrete pillbox itself, but it's important to remember that these would have been surrounded by quite considerable trench system, along with dugouts and completely surrounded by barbed wire. So again, thanks Emma for the uh, little bit of uh, information there about, about Suffolk these, Square. Yeah, these particularly special to Suffolk, like I said, and we've actually got, I think, well over 50 of these still in Suffolk, but along this particular part of the coast that we're going to be showing you, I think this is the only one that was remaining. Yeah. And although it wasn't the easiest one to get to, um, we had to get to yeah, it. Yeah, of course we so did. Uh, obviously the video is not going to be any good without actually seeing it. Absolutely not, we determined. But um, I believe Emma's going to be actually taking you a look round all this. Yes, yeah. yeah, I'll pop my head in it. Um, I can just about get in, so... We'll better have a little look, I suppose. Right, well, I'm going to pass the camera over to Emma, so see you in a sec. <laughs> right, so here we are, down a few little steps. I'm assuming that's a bit of a blast wall for protection that we've just gone past. And inside the pillbox. And uh, it's nice to see a few features in here that we don't often see. We'll ignore the graffiti and the rubbish, obviously. But um, these are, are very much like a Type 26, um, but just larger. I think that's pretty much the difference between these Suffolk squares and sort of standard Type 26s. But this is quite nice because we've actually still got some of the original metal brackets for the windows that we don't very often see. And uh, there's two loopholes on each wall. Some of these are blocked up, as you can see, and some of them for some reason haven't been. So, yeah, it's quite nice. And also we've got these concrete uh, shelves, but again, we don't very often see them. So although they're a little damaged, it's still quite nice. Of course, that would have been used for, you know, the men with their rifles to sort of lean on. And of course, looking out, I mean, this is right out onto the coast. Obviously now it's just overgrown. <laughs> um, but they would have been sort of looking out to see if they could see enemy enemies landing on the beaches and that, I guess. Um, but they're quite large. Um, no rig any ricochet walls or anything in here. Um, just a concrete roof. Uh, you can see this was sort of the typical wooden planks 
um, poured on the concrete on top of it. You can sort of make out the grain of the wood there. I'm not sure if you can quite see that, but uh, yeah, that's quite nice. So I don't think there's anything else much to show you in here, but I thought I'd give you a little look. So uh, I think we'll get out of the door and reconvene with Stu. Uh, so we've just come down off of the pillbox, which is just up the top there, and reconvened with Emma, and she's done a really nice little Yeah, there wasn't much to see in there, but it, like I said, it's the only one along here um, remaining. There obviously was more mm. uh, in, in the past. Some of them have fallen to the sea, some of them have been demolished. But, yeah. uh, some of them was destroyed in training. Training, yeah, a lot of them you know. actually. This whole, like I think I said earlier in the video, a lot of this area around Sizewell was used for training, and they, they basically, all the engineers blew, blew them up, I think. Blew them up, yeah, so. <laughs> but um, anyway, we've got a few more features, some of them more interesting this this one to have a little look at plus That's one it. or two things that we're hoping to stumble across That's along it. the way down towards Thorpe Ness. Okay so uh, come and have a walk with us and uh, see what else we can find. So as we were walking um, through this lovely footpath. Yeah along the coastal cliff it's um, been quite scenic hasn't yeah, it? Yeah it's, it's been lovely. very scenic but we have been looking in the bushes and like Emma just said a minute ago it's very unusual not to be meeting other military uh, buildings or, or objects yeah. on the way through. Of course, there would have been more here. Yeah. I mean, I, no doubt we've walked past spigot mortars buried in the undergrowth that haven't been recorded yet. Exactly. Um, there would have very likely been more pillboxes and things. Exactly, yeah. But... This is quite interesting. Yes. Um, we've just come past, it's on private ground, so we can't go into it, but there's nothing saying that we can't put our camera over and have a quick look. Yeah. So let's have a quick look, shall we? And we'll tell you what we're looking at. Yeah, so, okay, right, so we're both over. Hang on a minute. Well, just, put a, just hope no one's in here. <laughs> yeah. Right. So this is a peel box. Yes, believe it or not, this looks very much like a garden feature for the Sizewell Hall, and that's actually what it is nowadays. But if you look on the pillbox study group website, there was a pill box here. Yeah. And, and it's if, been adapted, if you as look you at can the, tell. Look at the top over here. It's a gazebo. Oh. So it's actually been built around that, and it's been made a feature, but this nice. was a peel box. Yeah. Look at that. You can just about make out the concrete. Um, looks yeah. very much sort of like World War II concrete. So it that's does. quite fascinating. It is. And that's the impressive yeah. part. <laughs> we just thought we'd show you it as we were walking yeah. past. It seemed a shame not to mention it. That's but it. Um, we've got supposedly another row of interesting anti-tank blocks we to have. show you. So, so let's go. Gonna get down here and have a look. So finally, here's our next feature. Quite a nice row of anti-tank blocks. And we've got about three or four of them behind us and they stretch down towards the coast. Well, they do now, maybe they've fallen, I'm not too sure, but let's have a look and see what we can find. So I've actually got quite a few of these sort of stretching almost down the cliff. Um, like I was saying, I'm not overly sure what they were protecting. I can only assume that this land has probably eroded away and maybe they were sort of protecting any tanks being able to travel off of the beaches and up through along the coastline. But um, they're all, a little bit topsy-turvy now, but uh, it's still nice to find some more of those defences along here. So just with those anti-tank blocks just behind us there, we've come across another feature. As you can see, just running along the side here is a wall. And I know it, it just looks like sort of any standard wall built by bits of shingle from the beach, no doubt, and it probably was originally. But if you look really very closely, you can actually see what appears to be loopholes in this wall. And we've actually got one just here. And in fact, these loopholes actually run the whole stretch of this wall. Now, often during World War II, these, these well, all sorts of walls were adapted. Um, and basically they were loopholed walls. Um, I actually assume that if need be, they would have had riflemen using them as a bit of protection as they guarded the beaches below. But the reason why we thought we'd point them out is because they're actually quite rare. Of course, many of them have been sort of knocked down, filled in, changed into other things sort of over the, over the decades. But um, this is quite a complete one and certainly worth pointing out. So dotted along the coast here, a stronger form of defence was needed to be in place in the form of coastal defence barriers. And we're actually just about reached the site of where one of those used to be. So the job of these batteries was to fire out to enemy shipping 
stopping them from reaching our harbours and to stop the smaller boats from being able to reach our beaches. Once again, Emma's just presented that very nicely. Uh, we've just literally just come down this footpath. And still walking south. And still walking, yeah. yeah. Uh, but here we are, we're at the, the unknown uh, building. Uh, we've had a look around before we're going to show you. Uh, we've got a few guesses. Yes. Um, so all we know is that this was the site of a, of a gun battery with six inch guns. Um, they would have been housed likely in two separate sort of gun houses. Yeah. There's, there's nothing else really here now except for this particular structure. Now, of course, we'd have had searchlights here, ammunition storage, um, all the guns, usual stuff. The lot. Yeah, generator rooms, all the usual things that come with these gun batteries. Of course, there would have also been camps and things, yeah. but we'll talk to you about that in a minute. But this structure, nobody seems to be overly sure exactly what it was used no. for. So uh, maybe we'll take you for a little look. And then we'll give you our conclusion at yeah. the end. And maybe someone out there can help us. We'd love it if you could tell us. I've got many books about this thing and nothing seems to say anything other than something we don't think it is. That's so, it. so let's go and have a look. Let's go and have a look. <laughs> And here we are inside what appears to be the only structure of this battery. And I've got to admit, we don't usually see buildings like this at gun batteries. Um, so we're not completely sure off the top of our heads what it could be. Now, the only record that I've got is that this was actually used for a generator. My personal opinion, and I know Stu agrees, is that it's not really got anything reminiscent of a generator hut. Normally we would see plimps on the ground, we would see numerous sort of ventilation pipes and things. There's not really anything like that here. What we can tell is that this room was actually once divided into two, and clearly it's been adapted or changed at some point, as well as these loopholes that seem to run not only the, uh, the west side of the building, but also on the east side. Possibly they could have been added at a later date for some sort of added protection, but we're not overly sure. Now we'll just take you through to the, build, the rooms on the east side here, and again, nothing particularly obvious telling us what this could be. Clearly quite large windows here, not something we often see in generator rooms. <laughs> and again, we've got some of those loopholes that would have been looking straight out onto the sea. Obviously, I can imagine maybe they used this as a little bit of a dual purpose um, structure for different things. But um, it's actually made up now of three rooms, but like I said, likely four. Could this have been used for communications? Because of course we know that gun batteries needed to communicate between the actual guns themselves and the observation lookout post that would have been here looking for the enemies arriving. Could it have been a crew shelter? Possibly, I mean, it does have sort of signs of that. Or did they maybe also have generators here at some point? We're not overly sure. But uh, like we said, if you've got any idea what this could have possibly have been, then we'd love it if you could actually let us know because uh, nobody we've spoke to so far seems to know. Being hastily built in just a matter of weeks, these gun batteries were often used fairly incomplete to start with. Sometimes were just sandbags for protection until they could be better protected with concrete roofs. Sometimes the troops stationed here were only actually given tents and open cookhouses until they could eventually improve the facilities for them. Attempts were often made to try and disguise these gun batteries, but this was almost impossible in most cases, and the one we've actually got here was actually machine gunned on several occasions. So we're still walking along the coast path here, and we've got a couple more features that we're hoping to be able to find. But according to my map, there is actually a small feature down here. Uh, it's quite overgrown. It's certainly much more overgrown than the last time we saw it, but we'll pop the camera in and we'll give you a little look anyway. So here we are overlooking the coast path just below here. We've just come off of it and just tucked away. Now we almost missed it because it's so overgrown now. We've got a spigot mortar base. And uh, <laughs> well, there it is what we can see anyway. As you can see, we've got the, uh, the metal um, sort of pivot where they would have put this um, sort of spigot mortar gun. I'll see if I can pop a little picture in of what that would have looked like. And it would have been mounted on this, uh, this great big round sort of concrete barrel almost. Now, of course, this is, uh, this is nowhere near as extent as what it would have been. You would have had a ditch all the way around the outside here and they would, the men would have been able to sort of stand down in that sort of, sort of ditch almost. Very likely would have had somewhere to put their ammunition, maybe sandbags or even concrete sometimes, but 
there we go. It's um, certainly an important sort of defence that they would have had very likely dotted all along the coast here. But this one is the only one we can find. But we thought it was still nice to have a little look. Now, despite all of these defences, the plan that was known as the coastal crust was actually relatively thin. And for the men whose job it was to defend these positions, the mission was simple. You either fought until you were captured or killed. There was to be no retreat. But thankfully, most of the coastal defences were never actually needed to be used, which is good really, because they were built so quickly and so hastily that quite a lot of mistakes were made. And even though they did in fact go to try and rectify this later on, the defences here were probably quite inadequate and would very unlikely have withheld any sort of proper invasion on the coast here. Okay, so we've got some major disappointment uh, on our trip today. Not, <laughs> first one. It's the first one actually, and sometimes these places we, we don't go to, we don't see them, and unfortunately we can't go in and see this one because... Yeah, unfortunately, well, we're, we're nearly at Thorpe Ness now, which was our aim. Yeah. And we knew that just, uh, just before we got to Thorpe Ness, there was a field gun emplacement. Now, I've seen pictures of it on the internet, and if I can include one in, yeah. then I will. These field guns were basically... They were plotted along the coastline and, and their job was to fire shells down onto anybody that did actually manage to make it mm. past all the other defences yeah. and actually get to the beaches. Um, yeah. This one up here is even beyond us with the overgrowth, yeah. isn't it? It is quite yeah. bad, but unfortunately we've, we've literally travelled about two or three miles yeah. along. We've just been walking along and uh, this is the stopgap. So we are going to end the video at this point. Uh, but it has been an amazing day, hasn't yes. it? I mean, up and down, along the coastline, it's been a beautiful day. It is beautiful. This is a beautiful part of the coast. Yeah. Um, if you've never been to the Suffolk coast, then I'd highly recommend it. Yeah. There's plenty of other defences around here to see, and we're going to try and get to a few more in the future. That's it. Uh, and hopefully, with this field gun emplacement being here still, we might actually yeah. find some others, because there was quite a lot of information I actually wanted to say about it, with it working with observation posts that would have relayed messages and things, yeah. the type of guns that they would have had. Um, but we were really hoping to be able to have a look at it because it was it, quite yeah. substantial it but was can't even see it no we? but um we are going to conclude our video now so you know if you like the video please like and subscribe i mean it, it's been helping us out a lot i know we haven't been making too many videos but the summer's here yes and finally. we are going to start making videos that's it we've done a few of these sort of coastal military videos just that's lately it. so if you like this one then you might like the one that we did up at chroma so maybe take a little look at that that's it. and also thanks to our patreons as well we've had yeah. a lot of support just lately which has yeah. been amazing if and we've got a couple of new ones yep if you'd like to join then check out the description below. But That's it. if not, just give us a subscribe and a like. It's uh, always very much appreciated. And please message us for any information that we've either misread or something that you know. Yes, because we're always happy to learn more. That's it. But from the Suffolk coast, here somewhere between Thorpness and Sizewell, yeah. we hope you enjoyed watching. See ya. Bye-bye. Thanks as always. Bye-bye.